Hello, everyone. This is JT Keating, Vice President of Product Strategy here at Symperium. I would like to welcome everybody to another one of our webinars, um, especially in this day and age. Uh, a lot of people, of course, are really paying attention to things online. Um, and so it's a great <clears throat> opportunity for us to be able to spread some information. Hopefully, everybody's doing well. Um, this is, a, I'm excited about this webinar. I'm really excited about this webinar um, because uh, I'm, I'm joined. Um, by Harsha Nagaraju, Senior uh, Product Marketing Manager at VMware. Um, and uh, so he and I are going to be doing this in a tag team, uh, which is awesome because when you start putting these two worlds together, um, you've got the MTD piece of Zimperium, and then you've got the UEM and a great uh, 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 centralized visibility source with uh, Workspace One Intelligence all coming together. It's really kind of cool. So before I dive in, Harsha, thanks for, thanks for joining me. I'm looking forward to it. Hey, thanks for having me, JD. I'm, I'm super excited to be here. Uh, just like how you said, uh, the coming together of these two worlds, management and security, um, and bringing in the best of breed solutions together for our customers is, is super exciting for us, and I'm sure the customers will love it. So I'm looking forward to this session, and uh, let's get started. I can't wait. Yeah, no, absolutely. So as we dive in, um, usual uh, perfunctory comments. I like to say that because my mom was an English teacher, and it makes her feel <laughs> Um, cool. <laughs> we will, uh, we're going to try and keep this like 20, 25 minutes worth of content. Um, at the tail end, there'll be uh, time for Q&A. Um, if nobody has questions, neither one of us believes in making up questions just to make ourselves sound good, we will give you some of your time back. Um, an archive version will be up on the site before long. Um, and if anybody's interested in the slides, um, we can make those available to you as well. So to Harsha's point, um, and he you know, nailed it. Uh, let's let's dive in and start talking about the the convergence and the kind of best of both worlds and how it provides really great mobile security. So we always have to start with the business initiatives, right? You know, until there's a reason that the business cares, then you don't have to worry about security or anything along those lines. Well, mobile is clearly critical right now. Um, it's been critical for quite some time, and it's becoming even more critical. Um, and there's device initiatives and mobile app initiatives that people are going about um, driving as a part of their business. Um, and so, for instance, on the device side, which is the focus of today's conversation, almost two thirds of the devices that are accessing corporate assets and having access to corporate networks, et cetera, are mobile. Um, and so since that's the case, we now have these new devices that traditional endpoint security solutions have not been focused on that are providing access to, uh, to this information. So that's great, and the business is going that way, and users are happy, and they get to be, you know, use these cool devices and be mobile. But what it does is it also exposes those same assets and access to new threats and new risks. Uh, there's four big buckets of threats that hit mobile devices. There's malicious apps, mobile phishing, network attacks and device compromises. Um, I've been doing cybersecurity for 20 years now. And one of the laws of cybersecurity is persistence. For as long as bad guys have been going after any device, servers, point of sale, doesn't matter. They want to be persistent as long as possible because what they're usually doing is a land and expand strategy. They're taking over a piece of, a piece of hardware and then they're using that to pivot into others, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, Consent, since mobile apps are all in containers, the only way to actually be persistent on mobile is to actually compromise the device. Elevate privileges, gain root access, malicious profiles on iOS. These are, these are the ultimate goal. People know a lot about malicious apps, but from a corporate standpoint, malicious apps are something you need to know about, but it's not the primary concern. Why do I say that? Well, if I'm targeting XYZ company, I'm not gonna drop an app in the app store and hope somebody from XYZ company downloads it. It's a bad business model. And even though the guys that are, the, the, are going after enterprises are bad dudes, they're good at what they do. So they're not gonna do something that's totally inefficient. What they're gonna do in order to achieve the ultimate objective of compromising the device is they're either gonna do mobile phishing or they're gonna do a network attack. For instance, if, if we're sitting here and I say I'm going after XYZ company, one of the most efficient ways of doing it is putting a fake Wi-Fi network up right by XYZ's headquarters 
wait till somebody connects to it, compromise the device. So what we need to do is we need to be able to address these attacks. Now, there's been solutions that have been on, across device network phishing and apps on the corporate side that have kind of that have been the, the set the bar you have to you know do certain things but they didn't provide proactive detection and protection on mobile so examples encryption examples being containers um, you know including uh, uem containers and, and corporate workspaces things along those lines vpns etc but gartner recognized this as well as companies like us and said we need um, we need a category of, of technology that is actually going to be doing the detection of these of these capabilities. What they've basically done is they've for those folks that are endpoint protection folks that are listening on this webinar, they equate mobile threat defense with EPP and EDR. Now, I I personally uh, think that this uh, that this um, slide is a little bit outdated. And, and Harsha, I would imagine you do too, um, because it seems to me that unified endpoint management is now across all of them. Uh, what, yeah. what, are your, what are your thoughts on that, Harsha? No, absolutely. I, that was my first thought as soon as I looked at this graphic that you have here. The, the picture on the right, it, it calls that unified endpoint to be something that's used for managing mobile devices only. Um, but I think just by definition, the word unified suggests that you should be able to manage any type of devices. So, uh, and in fact, that's where the value of Workspace ONE, um, the, the marquee product from uh, VMware comes into picture, right? So um, this actually is a great opportunity and, and, a, and a time for me to like uh, introduce the audience here uh, about Workspace ONE and why it was uh, it actually makes sense and how it came about in the first place. If you think of it, uh, there is this growing gap between management and security. What I mean by that is uh, VMware and especially Workspace ONE, the product, is uh, recognized in, in the market, in the industry. If you look at any analyst report, whether it's Gartner, IDC, or, or Forrester, VMware's UEM portfolio is, is uh, to, the, to the top and to the right. It's, it's a leader in this space, which means that we can do the management of all these devices or the applications on these devices uh, really, really well. But then uh, as we start discussing with customers and, um, and partners uh, and the ITs and the CIO, IT admins, the CIOs in all these uh, companies, we realize that security is now a strong influencer when they make decisions on IT tools even. Because what's happening is that uh, if, when you have these siloed tools, um, uh, things fall through the crack. And then uh, you have teams not talking to each other, you have employees and, and customers being managed by all these different teams and who, is no, who are not even talking to each other, right? And so we want security and management to go hand in hand. And many of the IT teams and customers, they care about security more today than ever before, right? So if you click on the next slide, I have this one more graphic, which I think your uh, uh, the audience here will really like it. In, in many large enterprises, um, certainly in the past, but um, uh, it's, it's not that common these days, but you still see very large enterprises were set up this way. There is one team that manages everything mobile, right? And even inside of that team, there may be a sub team that manages only iOS and Mac and another sub team that manages Android and Go. And there could be a whole uh, another team that manages only desktop. And then there could be a third group that manages a line of business products. Uh, or applications such as Salesforce One, Workday, and, and so on and so forth. The problem with this, I was, like I was saying, is that not only is management difficult, but setting up having con uh, consistent security policies across all of this becomes really, really hard. Now, in today's world, um, all of us, we, I think we work in companies, most of us at least, who, who encourage and allow BYOD policies, which means you can bring your own devices, you can use your own private device, to do uh, enterprise work sometimes. So what does uh, that do to people like me and you is that we have one device, we have one mobile device, we also have maybe a MacBook or a, a Windows uh, a desktop or a laptop to get our work done. And so you, you're, as, as a user, you are in all these three different buckets at, at any given time, and you're ma getting managed by three or four different teams, which just creates this chaos. And, it, uh, and everybody's running around in cycles and no work is ever getting done. And if something breaks, God save you, right? Because you're just running pillar to post to get anything fixed. So that was the driver for why we created, if you uh, click for me once, please, uh, 
you know, we, we created this digital workspace platform and this is workspace one for you because the idea is, hey, you cannot have siloed management. You need to have one platform and give a, the IT admin and the CIO full visibility into their entire IT fleet, and be it uh, mobile devices or desktops, laptops, or even rugged IoT. And we, we should not uh, care about what kind of operating system runs on all these devices, but the end user services team, the IT admins or the CIO, he should have full visibility as well as the ability to manage these devices wherever they are, right? And we need to bring something similar to the world of security and try and start converging these together. Um, I also want to make one uh, one point about this uh, this how unified endpoint is it's uh, it's just tied to the mobile devices in one of your earlier slides uh, as referred by Gartner, right? Unified endpoint uh, for sure in inside of VMware it started off as a mobile management solution because uh, we acquired a company called AirWatch which was a leader in the mobile management. But since then we have expanded the capabilities to now be able to manage even um, laptops and PCs and virtual desktops and rugged IoT, right? So we are clearly um, unifying this management layer and expanding it beyond mobile to manage anything. And so it just uh, makes absolute sense for us to kind of extend security also across all of this. Right. So with this, uh, I think let's let's dig a little deeper into um, how this. Uh, what are the security pieces that you bring in, and then we will give our customers a combined view of how we are bringing security and management together. Yeah. No. That that that's perfect, Harsha. I and mean, as you were going through it, I was I was thinking to myself um, just of the the power and the need and the value of unification um, for for so many different people. Right. Um, you know. The, there's there's the unified management part itself in terms of the managers yeah. and the more I can have a management a consistent platform I can train across a consistent you know set of workflows that instead of having to be totally specialized in all these things and then to your point from a user standpoint having having a unified approach makes it so much easier for me so that's like you know okay, wait, who am I supposed to call for this device? And who am I supposed to call for that device? And, you know, and it's, yeah. just, it, it's just, it, it's a, so, so the unified part from that standpoint makes so much sense. And then as you and I know, we're going to be talking about here in a quick second, unifying the security information and the security responses. Um, if, if, if Harsha's uh, mobile device if somebody goes after him on his mobile device, maybe with a mobile phishing attack, or if he's on a bad Wi-Fi network, what about his laptop, right? You know, it, it's, 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 you know, how do I get this unified view um, is, is critical as we go forward. So um, we were talking about the four different uh, types of attacks. Um, and we we're talking about mobile threat defense, and that's the ability to detect these attacks. Um, one of the things I mentioned that a primary way that we're, we're here to protect the enterprise, right? VMware is here to protect the enterprise. Imperium is here to protect the enterprise. We're not, we're not in the consumer game. We're here to protect enterprises. So from our standpoint, the Imperium side, we said, okay, what attacks are the bad guys going to try and use? And as I mentioned, we knew that mobile phishing was on the way up, but network attacks was the primary one. If network attacks, in the network attacks, our data shows the majority of the targeted attacks against enterprises start with a, with a bad network. That means the bad guy owns the network. And if the bad guy owns the network, you can't rely on him to allow you to go to a cloud for all your detection. So we said from the very beginning, we have to do a, a, as close to 100% of our machine learning based detection of known and unknown threats on device. So we train up in the lab, and this engine is called Z9. Once we have these machine learning identifiers to accurately detect these four attack vectors, then we actually put those down on device. So the, the, what are the advantages of on-device detection? One is you can keep defending yourself even when the bad guy owns the network. Two, privacy. We don't have to send any data off the device if we don't want to. So when GDPR happened, there was no issues at all. If you're having to send a lot of information up to the cloud, some of that might be considered PII. The third major benefit is the fact that it, it enables us to be able to operate on any cloud. 
So our solution is called Zips. Um, we have two different ways we can roll Z9 out. One protects devices, the other protects mobile apps, it's an SDK. The one that protects devices is called Zips. And what it does is it does risk identification, threat detection, then it works quite often with Workspace ONE. And matter of fact, um, Harsha mentioned um, the AirWatch guys. AirWatch was the first at the time mobile device management solution that Zimperium ever integrated with. So our companies have been working together for as long as the mobile threat defense space exists, right? So we'll identify risks, which means things that are making you more likely to be attacked or more likely for an attack to succeed. Out of date operating systems, leaky apps, unsecure Wi Fi networks. Then we detect threats across the four vectors mobile phishing, device compromises, MIDIMs, rogue access points, malware. We'll work with VMware um, to actually Workspace One to remediate that. And then we provide reporting. In some cases, we provide reporting into SIM solutions and the like, but Harsha and I are going to be talking about a very cool place that we provide reporting into. And we have a whole bunch of design principles that are all fundamentally built around the fact that we're the enterprise guys, right? Um, but in the interest of time, we are going to actually move over and now talk about, I mentioned we provide all this data and there's so much value in being able to have an integrated view, a unified view, not only from a management standpoint, but also a security standpoint. And in order to do that, you need a couple things, right? You need to be able to detect these threats on any endpoint. And then you need a unified view of those, of all the data that comes in and a unified ability to operate and execute against it. And that is Workspace ONE Intelligence. So Harsha, would you like to, uh, to chat about the next few slides as we talk about this cool integrated platform of Workspace ONE Intelligence? Yeah, I think so. I think our, our uh, listeners have now understood the, the value of unified management and the value of security that Zimperium brings to the table here. Now let's just uh, tell them how you add one and one, one plus one here and show them how it becomes three here. Um, so this is Workspace ONE, the platform, right? Um, and it, it's got many different layers to it. It started off uh, with, with, with the context layer, the, the layer in, in the teal color right there, uh, where we are unifying devices, things, virtual desktops, applications, and network. And this is where AirWatch, which was initially managing only mobile devices, uh, was expanded and became what is now called as UEM. So the Workspace ONE platform gets its context, meaning it understands the compliance status of all of these devices and applications through this layer. So what we did was now that we have compliance, we built platform services on top of it, which is the light blue uh, layer right on top of context. And so some of the services that we offer is unified endpoint management, app lifecycle management, which means that you can install applications, any type of applications on all of these devices and remove it and manage it too in terms of like uh, keeping it updated, uh, putting in the right security patches, et cetera, et cetera. We have zero trust air conditional access control, which means that uh, we, uh, we have our own access capabilities, but also work with third party uh, providers and federators such as Ping and the Octas of the world. Um, and so if you want to continue using them, uh, you can still use them because it integrates really nicely with Workspace ONE. And so we have MFA capabilities built right in. Um, and so this is where we will name the conditional access capabilities. Then you have VDI published apps, mobile flows to, to basically give you the best of class uh, uh, customer experience um, where all the applications and the flows are connected in the back end um, and then the secure apps and SDKs uh, workspace one comes with certain secure applications such as boxer which is an email client it will be also have an SDK for uh, for partners or customers to go develop their applications uh, using our SDK and then on top of that now that we have all the services in place and the contacts in place, we've built something really cool and JT has referred to this a couple of times uh, so far. And this is the, the integration that we're excited to bring to you guys today is with intelligence. It's, it's the darker blue shade on top. Uh, you'll see this is a cloud service offering. What intelligence does is, is basically able to, it is able to ingest information from the, the layers underneath it, which is uh, the devices, the applications, and, and, and the user information too, and comes to their uh, 
um, login credentials and use that all, all that information. Also use information coming from uh, our partners such as Zenpedium, um, as well as third party sites such as CVE websites um, so that they can get the latest uh, CVSS and KB patches coming from the internet um, and Microsoft and use that. And then it, it does the aggregation of that information, uh, correlate all of them draws out real deep data driven insights and then helps you make decisions when it comes to remediation right um, so and some of the output coming out of that is uh, is really around uh, um, uh, reporting dashboards visibility um, as well as uh, it can tie into other third-party ITSM tools which are ServiceNow or Slack and helps you remediate your devices by patching the applications, blocking access to that particular access of uh, an application or the device if needed, et cetera, et cetera, right? So that is the Workspace ONE platform for you. It cuts across all these silos and gives you the best of class experience, management, visibility, as well as security. So um, as we build on this, uh, please keep going ahead, JD. Um, the Zimpedium, this is the existing integration, right? This is the uh, integration that JT talked about with uh, with, uh, with our UEM layer. When AirWatch was the leader in the space, we already had an integration with Zimpedium where we were allowing uh, mobile customers to directly tie into UEM. But what we are announcing today and, and one are excited to bring to you is this new integration with the intelligence layer, which is at a much higher layer. And it, it is cloud-based, uh, uses the latest uh, advancements in machine learning and artificial intelligence to give you a predictive security versus uh, being reactive after the fact, right? Because as soon as we detect uh, one vulnerability or a threat on one particular device, we are able to, uh, to use that to now push updates and patches to all the devices on a network even before they are infected, right? So this is where we get ahead and make sure that uh, our productivity stays high, users don't lose time. And uh, and we can, uh, by automating all of this, the IT admins save uh, hundreds and hundreds of hours trying to find the right patches and manually pushing it to every device out there, right? So, uh, and that's why we're excited to, to bring this uh, new integration with Zimpedium to our customers. And I think that our customers will love this. Um, I, I can uh, maybe there's one more slide I can talk about uh, uh, JD I put together this, this is a little bit more information on workspace one intelligence so how we are able to aggregate information correlate recommend and automate um, and the next slide I can talk to you a little bit more about how it all comes together right um, so this is where uh, this is a flywheel slide and customers love this because it just brings this complex idea or somewhat not complex, it's a sophisticated product, but it's a very simplistic view and anybody gets this as soon as they look at it, right? If you look at it on the left, this is everything that you can ingest, the endpoint analytics, the CVE information, identity analytics, app analytics, and threat analytics using Plus Network, feeds into intelligence in the middle right here, it uses machine learning and spits out dashboards, reports, actions, notification, and even calculates what is now called as risk score, um, we announced this very recently um, at VMworld, so it's only been about three months, and it went GA just last week, which means that uh, Workspace One Intelligence can now calculate a risk score for the user and the device, and based on the risk score, a low, medium, or a high, we can grant different levels of access or no access at all, right? If it's a very risky device or a user, you can uh, set up your access policies to completely block access to that particular mobile device or the application on that particular mobile device, right? It's, it's very powerful and, and I think it's very, very cool as well. Um, and so if you see on the left here, Trust Network Partners, this is where we are able to ingest information uh, coming from our, the best of breed security partners, which is Impedium, combine it with all the other information that Workspace ONE captures and give our customers a combined unified view, right? It's just not about giving you uh, information on what's happening on the management site separately and then some, and uh, asking your users or customers to jump onto a different uh, dashboard to go look at what's happening on my security site. It's about unifying them so you have one view of how secure and well integrated all your IT tools are, right? Um, and so this is where uh, you'll see in the next click, I uh, use Zimpedium is now able to 
feed this threat uh, in, uh, information directly into workspace one intelligence uh, because of this open API that we have built in. And workspace one intelligence takes that information, combines it, and gives you a risk score, actions, reports, and dashboards, which our customers can then use it to set up beta scans of access policies. Yeah, I, I think this is a great, great story. Uh, I like the fact how uh, we started with mobile management and we had a partnership with Zimperium even then. And as the, as the market has evolved and the definition of a unified endpoint management has evolved to manage everything beyond mobile devices, our partnership with Zimperium has also evolved. And now we are bringing it to the uh, Workspace ONE intelligence layer. So making sure our customers have the best possible solutions and our partnership continues to grow. All right, uh, what do you think, J JT? Yeah, you know, Harsha, I mean, I sit here and I, I look at it and, um, you know, for instance, when you were talking about the scoring part of things, yeah. you know, I think, uh, I think I love, the, I love the foundation, I love the structure that is being put in place. And I think we've only just begun to scratch the surface Absolutely. how some of this information is going to come together. So for instance, um, you know, uh, if you've got a, a device score and you have a, a user score, the user score um, could be impacted by, you know, the device, obviously, you know, if a device is compromised, um, uh -huh. you know, if, if maybe if, you know, as more and more people are going to two factor authentication, mm -hmm. uh, the knowing knowing the state of the mobile device in that particular right. case, which is where a lot of two-factor authentication is, right. impacts my trust in that, uh, that uh, two-factor authentication. Because if a bad guy, has, if the device has been compromised, there's a good possibility the bad guy is the one that's actually using the two-factor authentication, and so the whole thing falls apart. Absolutely. Actually having a scoring combination that puts all that stuff together and then takes proactive action like what you guys are talking about doing is, is huge. Because the more we can make this fully automated, yep. the policies that are already set in advance, that, and so it responds without having to have any kind of a human in the loop as it's sensing these things, um, uh, I think is gonna be, I think it's gonna be really critical. And, and one of the things that I'd love to hear you talk a little bit about, if you wouldn't mind, I mentioned that, um, we've got machine learning based detection on the endpoint itself. So in our case, we're talking about machine learning detection to be able to know, is this a device compromise, phishing, et cetera. Obviously, Carbon Black, now part of VMware, has machine learning detection on the endpoint, very analogous to Zimperium, even though different uh -huh. platforms, right? Right. But then Workspace One Intelligence also has machine learning capabilities. Can you elaborate a little bit on you know, it's a it's the same concept of the machine's got to be able to learn things, and but but it's a totally different application. So, can you explain a little bit about the machine learning part? Yeah, absolutely. So what 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 we're doing is um, workspace on intelligence is a cloud service, right? So it's not doing anything on the device per se. It relies on information being sent to the cloud, and the intelligence cloud then is able to run its machine learning algorithms in the cloud um, to, to uh, correlate all this information coming from our partners, such as yourself, um, and, uh, as well as even Carbon Black. Yes, Carbon Black was a partner just like Zimpedium before it became a part of uh, VMware. So we had the same exact relationship with Carbon Black. So we combine all that information and we also, like I said, can gather information about the endpoint itself, whether or not um, the user has the latest operating system, whether or not they uh, they have outdated uh, uh, security patches, and whether or not, like you said, maybe it's a compromised device, somebody stole the device and tried to access it, right? We can gather all that information, combine it together, and then we use our machine learning algorithm on that combined data to calculate a risk score associated with the user. So for example, um, maybe the user, all the information that's coming in about the user and the device uh, leads us to believe that the risk is low, but then Zimperium detects uh, an, uh, an attack, maybe a, mal uh, a malware or, or a phishing attack that, like you talked about earlier. And so that you could send that information to us in the cloud and say, hey, I just detected this phishing attack on um, the device that belongs to ABC. And so immediately what we can do is, okay, one of our trusted partners, which is Impedium in this case, has sent us this threat information. So I can immediately elevate the risk score 
for that device and user and make it in from a low to a medium and or maybe even a high depending on how severe the the, the attack is and then what that will do is that it'll automatically kick off certain automation rules which will in, which will uh, ensure that the person or the device no more gets access to enterprise data and then you give them a, in, more information on hey what happened um, uh, um, what, what are the events that happened which led us to uh, increase your risk score and remove your access and also give them steps of how they can go remediate it. Maybe go to talk to IT, they will uh, they will remove the, the vulnerability or the attack that is on your device, et cetera, et cetera. And then you restore access, right? So all of this is automated. Yeah, gone are the days where you suddenly lose access, you don't even know what happened and you're running around asking everybody and then it takes about two days for, for access to be restored, right? All of this is happening in the back end and you have visibility into why this happened, right? So it, it, I, I call this a multi-multi-fold improvement from the days of the past when it comes to managing threats, um, as well, first detecting it, managing it and responding to it in, in a very, very speedy fashion. No, I think that's I think that's awesome, and you know, and, and we always talk about um, you, that we want to create a security ecosystem, a security infrastructure that is very analogous to the human body in terms of nerve endings, um, yeah. and and so the, you know, it's like oh, you know, my hand realizes it's really hot. Well, you're right. touching something that's burning, right? You know, um, and the the rest of the body needs to respond to what what it's sensing. And that's right. what you guys are creating here. Um, and Absolutely. With, with partners such as ourselves, and by the way, folks, we've been highly focused on the endpoints right now, but another part of Workspace One Intelligence, as, uh, as Harsha was talking about, it was are the network guys, for instance, you know, and CASBs, and you know, it's like, how do you, how do you tie all this stuff together? So, so Harsha, thank you uh, very much. I'm just gonna leave this up because I think it's a great visual to, to kind of frame up and I'm gonna stop and see if anybody has any questions as I mentioned earlier uh, we try and keep this to you know 25 minutes worth of content and then questions um, and so we're going to uh, we're gonna stop and wait for questions and Harsha while we're while we're waiting any uh, any other last comments or questions uh, from yourself anything you don't think we hit no I think um, I think we cover this pretty well and hopefully the uh, our users or our listeners here got a very good sense for why it makes sense to combine management and security together and how in, in this case specifically combining Zimpedium and uh, Workspace ONE um, elevates the entire user experience and security, right? But I also think, JD, maybe we should uh, get back together um, in, the, in the next round when, you know, when we have an opportunity to uh, walk our listeners through dashboards and show them how cool our dashboards will look when we start pulling in data from both our solutions. What do you think? Oh, that's a great idea. I, I, I think having people actually being able to get the the true visuals would be a fantastic idea. So we'll we'll definitely do that, and we'll make sure that everybody listening to this webinar uh, knows about it as well. So yeah. so I don't I don't see any questions. Um, so uh, you know, Harsha, I'd just like to thank you again for joining me. Um, as always, this has been uh, this has been great. But you know, it's it's kind of easy to have great webinars when you got great products. <laughs> <laughs> very true yeah i mean we didn't get here overnight so we have learned from our experiences so it all seems easy now but uh, but yes. we both have worked together for many years uh, to bring the bring the solution to market so it's it's very easy now to talk about it you're right <laughs> yeah but you're absolutely right i always kind of joke about you know yeah you see this scar here well that was when you know and we've, we've definitely uh, had our scars over the years um, exactly. But uh, but the, the solution has come out amazing. So thank you again for joining me, my friend. And everybody else, I would just like to thank you and hope everybody has a fantastic rest of their day. All right. Take care, guys.